Yeah, there's a lot that happened this week. Random happened this week, yeah. Many things happened this week. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Nerdbomb Podcast, episode 204. Jeez, issue 204. We're like four weeks away from the anniversary, (laughs) which is normally we would have it at the end of this month, but I think it's because... No, so... Sorry, hi, everyone. Um, I'm George, that's Connor. We talk... uh, pop culture things and all things that are just nonsensical but you know life is short and yeah. it's quite hot outside but <laughs> very hot um so the channel was starting on the 28th okay what this month yeah okay but obviously i know that previously um the stuff would be uploaded late under old regime so um i think it was like early july we're about four weeks out and hopefully um i can say it now because i'm um, hopefully um our good friend Andy Kemp will be joining us for a special fourth uh, anniversary. Uh, yeah, so yeah, because he, yeah. he, him, Will, and Mike, excuse me, all joined us um, for that. Yeah, oh, and this weekend we got um, we, what we do in the shadows on Sunday. Oh my god, is this Sunday? I literally forgot. And then he like, thought it was up. July, not June. Oh, okay. so he put nineteenth for June. Yeah. Shit. Okay. Cool. That's yeah. good. So that's what we'll have to do. Anywho, um, yeah. Um, a lot has happened this week, but first of all, I just want to say well done to Connor because he's had some very good personal good news. So um, yeah, we're going to details no, on it because um, not just yet. It we'll do, we'll do that yet. once it starts. But um, exactly, yeah. We'll um, have to, we, I just want to say well done, man. Uh, we, we we're doing a trade federation new gun raid. Oh the, no, there are all of them negotiations behind the scenes at the minute. But no, it's yeah, um, yeah. We'll figure out where it where it all goes. I think I think it's nothing needs to really change because no, because it'll just be the time, wouldn't it? Yeah. it'll just be. You come from there and come straight here and do that from half five. Like I'll yeah. make sure. I'll and then that free and that frees you up at the yeah. at the week. I'm look, obviously when I because I'm not due to go back to work until next Monday now. Yeah, so that's been yeah. four weeks. That's flown by. That has gone and obviously, quick, yeah. I will be looking to make similar changes to my life because the channel is stepping up again. So we're gonna yeah. Good. Okay. It's, cool. Yeah. Cool. Um, and to celebrate, Connor got a Ravenger Thor Who's, Love and Thunder. It, yeah. It, well, we're four weeks away from four as well. Yeah. Well, that's like because you 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 said like you're really excited about it. So I was like, yeah, I just feel for like your good news. That's your guy. I just, I just feel like the journey. Like, okay, I'm not you know telling a story about yourself. The journey. I feel like we've all been mentally and any key workers that have had to work during COVID. We've all kind of been on a similar character arc. And I feel like the way Force felt in his movie, which of course we'll see in four weeks' time. And we'll it's about see. finding oneself again and getting the mojo back. About in a lot of different aspects. Mojo. I feel like. That's that figure. That is me. <laughs> I just feel like that's where I'm yeah. at. And I got, feel like, yeah, you had the fat Thor, didn't you, from uh, yeah. Endgame? The the Endgame set. Yeah, the, I've I, I, set, yeah, I I've now started ones. my journey because I've got Wong. So I was yeah. like, just, well, is that your, is that's it, my first, like one, your first yeah. figure. Yeah, that is your first figure. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because I was looking at like buying like loads of them, but then I was but at the time I was buying all the Doctor Who ones, but I've kind of lost the wave. The wave. I'm yeah. I'm about. Two and a half, maybe three waves behind on the Doctor Who stuff now. So okay. I had I had four of the. I think I had like because they would do two three packs, a Doctor and Tardis because that's mm. how I got um I got Trout and the War Games Tardis. Yeah, and cool they All would right. do two Dalek packs as well. So mm. it'd be it was gonna be like Daleks from two Daleks from every story. So I managed to get the Daleks and the Dalek Invasion of Earth ones, and then I think I missed the. Dalek Pack Three and things like that, and there was an exclusive one on the character mm. options that was the movie Daleks, but it was the ones they used in um, the Jungles of Mechanus bit in um, in in one of the movies. Um, in one of the serials, they used one of the movie Daleks, didn't they? In the prop in the background, it was basically like, "Here's how you get movie Daleks." Is the oh, thing. I, see, I see, and that sold out instantly. So, of course, oh, but the way. do you know what I do want to get? And I'm going to wait till payday. I'm going to treat myself. To. to both Peter Cushing movies on 4K. I literally was just going to bring that. Uh, Will, so that's like another three weeks. Because one of them's coming out at the end of this month, and the other They're one's out. out next month. They're out. The first one's out. The first one at least is out because I went on yeah. Amazon and they were both listed on there, obviously, like the top sellers. Are you getting and the steelbook or are you just getting the collectors? I might just get the steelbook because I've got Doctor Who steelbooks anyway, so it'll kind of just fit Going in. With the rest. So I'll, it'll kind of be like um, Doctor and the Daleks, um, Dalek Invasion of Earth on 50 AD, and then the... go into the series. Yeah. Well, it was Doctor Who and the Daleks, and then Daleks Invasion Earth twenty one fifty take away forty nine AD equals something like that, yeah. Jesus Christ or something. It's got the but, second yeah. one's got a really long title. Yeah, because it's not even Doctor Who and the Do Daleks. You, have, you, have you watched them Dalek movies? 
years and years and years ago. They were a proper bank holiday thing for me because obviously, like when I started getting into Doctor Two, and then they'd be on sort of like ITV Three standard. Kind I've of even thing. got the Blu-rays, and I've, I feel bad because I've not even opened them up. <laughs> I feel bad. I've not got them yet because I've wanted like a decent copy of them. Mm. And I've obviously seen the Blu-rays and that, and but it's weird because Amazon sort of got these things now where even the popular stuff's not being sold by Amazon because like a lot of the mm. Marvel 4Ks I'm after to complete my collection are then like through second sellers and stuff, Doctor which Strange I don't is, mind doing. Doctor Strange is getting a quick turnaround as well. That's out, I think, end of this month or beginning yeah. of July. Or something and it's stupid. 22nd. It'll be on Disney the Plus. Disney Plus. I know. Oh. It's just ridiculous. It's crazy. And um, stuff like that. I'm. I'm with Amazon. I don't mind. A lot of the times, if it's you know not something massive, I don't mind buying it through other things. But other if it's things, like, yeah. you know, forty odd quid for like a steelbook here and there, and it's through a second seller, sometimes it's like oh it's squeaky yeah. bum time till it arrives. But exactly, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. No, I do, I do really want to pick them up because um, I like. I think Doctor Who and the Daleks is better than the Daleks because it's the same story but faster <laughs> oh, both of the, yeah because both the movies are based on Dalek Invasion of Earth and the Daleks so right? do you know like From the story do you know like the history behind it so basically because of the Terry Nation of State money, power, fame, fame. etc Dalek contracts and stuff yeah yeah because yeah. so it's all like I think it was a similar sort of time to when he was um, trying to peddle out a um, Dalek spin-off thing like for America you know so, when he was trying to do that for a while 65 and 66 they were literally very quick turnaround weren't they both yes. the movies they were like together almost um, and um, to sort of like make a like get the Daleks out there a bit more, it was I think it was Studio Can- Canal, Canal yeah. that got the rights to yeah. basically they were going to adapt every Dalek serial into a movie, but using their continuity of Peter Cushing playing Doctor the, Who, Doctor Who, yeah, not who was Doctor. a human inventor. Okay. Um, and then his he has two grandchildren. He has Susan and Barbara. Okay. And then Ian's Barbara's See. boyfriend. Right. Basically. <laughs> okay. And then follows them into yeah. the TARDIS and TARDIS doth take off. And oh. there's, a, I think there's a joke in one of the comics or something and was meant to be in one of the Capaldi episodes, I think, that was... Mm. um, What, cut out or... Yeah, I think yeah. that, yeah, it was a thing that was cut out, like one of Stephen Moffat's... Like, he was good at joking, but also sort of like, here, you know, maybe this Satire. is how things, like, you know, happen. This is how it went in this timeline. Because yeah. there was meant to be a David Tennant line about him being human once in 1999 in San Francisco, but that was cut by Russell. Um. So um, I think it was basically like, um, it was something along the lines of like him being so famous that they made movies about him. Yeah. And he was like, yeah. and like, it's a thing of like, it's not even realistic or something like that. Or, like, <laughs> it's not even realistic. Like, you know, Cushing's portrayal of because it is a different continuity. Maybe in the multiverse it exists. Maybe Big Finish could somehow pick it up and do something with it. Perhaps. Maybe, but I like Doctor and the Daleks because it's faster than the Daleks. Yeah, not to say that the the Daleks isn't a bad serial. It's just because Daleks a lot of is the seven early... parts, seven parts, and then yeah. what Dalek Invasion of Earth is what t- is it something like ten parts? Five or eight, or eight, I think something like that. I feel like it's eight. eight. I know eight. it's like a longer Let's than. Should we say eight? And then yeah, when everyone in the comments eight. is like, oh, yeah, no, it's, it's clearly it's actually 7.7.5 gigawatts Yeah, long. they actually deleted yeah. one part because uh, they wiped it there and then. It's, it's actually the part for Mission to the Unknown. <laughs> yeah. Um, if that, should that ever be found? Um, oh, God, I, I wish. But then the reconstruction from that uni, like... From that uni was good. Four years ago now, something like that, mm. isn't it? That's still... Can't I'd sell it. COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Sell that. It's great. Um... But I uh, I love that we talk about Peter Cushion for like ten minutes. This is great. Yeah. Um, but um, Dial, uh, Dalek Invasion of Earth twenty one fifty AD. I've not watched in a while. I think while. I've only seen both of them once, and that was when I had the DVD. So this is even before I met you and the Blu rays and everything. This is literally when I was very little. And at some I've, point, I think I, was, I may have I got seen the Blu-rays it twice, and I hadn't opened but them. not owned them. I've seen yeah. Doctor and the Daleks. I had the old Dalek. Was it Dalek Mania Dalek DVD set? Was it I the had, silver one? Yeah, it's just like a silver. That's when Dalek. they used to be like, let's just. Put together some cobbled fucking box Stuff. sets. Yeah, you literally just. Yeah. We're to entertain them. We like money. Yeah, exactly. You know the series thirteen steelbooks like gone. Gone. Yeah, it's, it's gone the way of the series nine one, which because I I'm I'm look I mean we're just talking about like one specific Nerdy thing, but um, yeah. <laughs> I'm Geeky quite stuff. OCD about my like you know me like if I start something I kind of got to finish it, and my yeah, my deepest going. regret keep going. at the moment is that I didn't wait. Or know that there would be a standard version of the collection box sets because I would have gone like as beautiful and I love them, mm. like I love them, but for ten pound less, 
I would have saved so much more space. And that's yeah. just at a point in my life where I'm at, is I need to save space. Like, I'm saving space anyway by getting rid of the single DVDs. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's Storing that's the them dream. away for a car boot at some point um, once I've ripped all the special features that I don't have off them. And yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I like, I, like, I love them, but I started them, so I kind of got to finish them because I managed to. I think it was, it was on the podcast, wasn't it? We talked about the. Because, like, one of the first few episodes is when we ordered the Peter Davison set. Yes. Yeah. Because I managed to just get the Tom Baker one originally before yeah. the like re-release of mm. the limited edition one because yeah, it got yeah, delayed it got and delayed. they've all been delayed and thankfully this mon- Monday come in we get the season 22. Mm. Hopefully the disc trace stays like yeah, in the yeah, thing. Exactly, yeah. Because no the, the 24 one came loose and ripped out of my one but I ordered another one sent the other one back. Um, but the other one so far, Touchwood, has held... Yeah. But the season seventeen one always comes loose and it's not ripped anything, it's just like the glue dots have dried. So is that a production thing? A production but that's just thing. that's just me fucking moaning about shit. Because all the others have held together but I literally went mm. it might be a thing if I have to glue them back together, which is annoying because I just want a fucking You want an immaculate set. I mean yeah. you paid for the cost and then when it isn't up to par, of but course. If we could have foreseen it and just got the little case because we'd have got all Did the same context. Case? Yeah. Like yeah, just the little true. fucking standard old blu-ray case that would have been uh would have been fine but it's this, with the steel books i've started so i've kind of got a finish keep going yeah keep and going. series nine was it was a series that at the time i didn't like no having gone back to it retrospectively i like it more than i did at the time but you know exactly age yeah. and shit yeah and taste but that was one of the Wisdom. few first few times that Amazon started bringing out steelbook versions of stuff because they did they, that. They did the Sherlock series three because yeah, that was the same them, sort of, of them. Yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. And that sold out, and it only goes online for like two hundred quid of like steel sealed ones. Which like as time goes on, I'm tempted just so I because all of them now they started going back through re-releasing series one. Two, three, four, etc. etc. And the Jody ones have always come out in steelbook, and I've just got them because it's it's amazing. It's amazing looking and it's a great space saver because it's one, it's literally one disc case wide. Well, while we're on the subject of steel books, not Doctor Who related, but um, I've bought this week the the Batman, Robert Patterson's Batman. Got the steel book one. HMV limited edition steel book. Because what, have you got of the, a third, of the third bonus disc. But what was the third bonus disc? Right, so that's what I was going to get into. Is it into, just something so... in the way music video starring Robert Patterson? No, I think it's a Gotham featurette, but it basically is a set design how they made the Gotham City. And oh. where they filmed it in Chicago, London, New York. I haven't watched all of it, but that's the part of I, I like the it's an interesting feature. It, you know, I miss DVD extras. It's like a good forty-five minute long explaining how they shot Gotham and how they got it. Because apart like, from that, I think the like Spider-Man No Way Home was the last time a home media release was advertised with the special features. And even then, it wasn't a and lot. Then we didn't get the deleted scenes. <laughs> yeah, but it's coming to America and Canada for a limited release in September. Hopefully for us, but then I swear the American 4K they got the. Fe- I swear they had deleted scenes on the American disc because even when you search No Way Home on Amazon now, it, the American copy comes up as like forty-one pounds, just placeholder price, as a separate listing. So it makes me think are people importing the American copy just so they can get deleted scenes? But I don't know. Maybe I, th- I thought I heard. I don't know. You know, I'll tell you um, what, I can't be asked. But no, I basically bought the Steelbook because I heard of this third extra disc and stuff. And when I read the standard 4K on Amazon, it said two discs. And I was just like, all right, it's just a 4K disc and your Blu-ray for the movie and maybe the odd feature. Mm-hmm. But then shout out to Moviebug on YouTube. He um, did the standard edition unboxing off of Amazon. And there was three discs in there. Basically, you know how Blu-rays come with two like blue discs, one with the movie, one with the features. I thought... Oh, so I've paid extra, however much extra it was for the steel book from HMV. I, I mean, I like HMV, pretty... I like their content and whatever. Yeah. But I opened up my steel book and I thought, all right, cool, I'll get a really cool post which I hadn't seen elsewhere. I've got some nice art cards and some other stuff. But essentially, the third disc, it says special features. It's a green disc with, a, with question marks on it. It says like special features plus bonus exclusive content. So I thought I've made the right purchase. So is that different to the normal? I believe, yeah. It's it's different disc art, and I think I don't know what's on the standard special features disc and what's on this one, but I'm sure you'll have to report back to us once you watched it. What's it, what what is exclusive, and I'm sure wasn't listed anywhere is this Gotham featurette, which goes on for ages. Have you got a picture of it? Of the, what? Of, of the, 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 the um, still book, like the art that it looks like. Um, yeah, I can yeah, show you it on the H and V website. Yeah. I've got my phone, so I don't know what we're talking about. I was like, where have you left it? <laughs> oh, he's got to run off. So he's got. Sorry, we're on set. He's just got to dash off home to get his, uh, get his phone. Um, Batman HMV 4K thingy. 
but yeah, as far as steel books goes, I'm not like apart from Doctor Who, that's the only and and the Meg because of price. That was the, the only that steel was, books I had. That was why I did the Meg because the Meg was two pound more expensive than the normal 4K. So it was like, well, obviously yeah, so that's basically yeah, it's sold out now. But basically, that's that's it. So you've got. Batman. That's one of the best mark. posters that they've ever been on a Batman film, and or maybe on a comic book. I movie saw film. that disc and I thought I've got to have it, and it just says special feature plus exclusive content. So I'm like, oh, I've made the right purchase, and all the cards are nice, the poster's cool. So I just I felt like I made the right purchase in the end. You made you made the right Ray bloody purchase. Ray bloody purchase. Yeah. But, the UK. Uh, oh yeah. But um, oh lovely, I like that. That's very nice, love. Very, very nice. Um, love. Batman, very nice. Yeah. Film. So buy the cushion steelbooks. That's what I'm gonna do. They're 4K yeah. anyway, so fuck it. Absolutely. It'd just be good to see Doctor Who in 4K in general. Mm. But hopefully true 4K, because Twice Upon a Time to me just looked like a, a good upscale. It just looked more yes. the same. It didn't look like... <gasps> oh my I'm god. I'm surprised like, the Jodie ones haven't been I know. Up, like, released in 4K. I was looking forward to the Jodie era being... I was looking forward quality. to the Jodie era. End of yeah. sentence. And that's it. End of sentence. Um, should we talk about Doki Who while we're here anyway? Yeah, because we're on we've that had, topic. Yeah. We've had some stuff. Um, we've had another announcement... Mm. When was it? Monday or Sunday? Monday, yeah. That uh, Russell T. Davis posted another cryptic clue. Of a cryptic clue as to who two hearts is the Doctor. Plus, this time an actual diamond emoji. Yeah. Which led everyone to believe the werewolf from Tooth and Claw is coming back. That Queen Victoria killed with the diamond. <laughs> the werewolf by night is in Doctor Who. <laughs> Oh, I imagine. <laughs> or, or what was it? The White Point Star, Gallifrey and Diamond. So everyone's like, it's oh, the Time Lords. It's the Time Lords. <laughs> but cool. it was announced about an hour later. Neil Patrick Harris, welcome to Cardiff, playing the greatest enemy the Doctor has ever faced. Such a great In... actor. <laughs> such a great man. It's an honour and a hoot. Have fun. At, um, at NPH, at BBC Doctor Who. Ha ha. Um, and but... do you know, did you see some of the people that... Um, commented on it no i hadn't read the actual post no so one of them one of them hmm. is john sim oh who has commented on a lot of things mm, naughty naughty sims yeah okay what's he said um and he wrote ever question mark laughing face concerned face heart um and russell replied with um dot 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 this year this year mm. this year and then a kissy face and mm. yeah. Someone said I predicted this in September. I don't think that's a lie. Um, yeah, mm. what does that for me? Do we want more John Sim? Yes. 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 John Sim. Hide him this time. I just, I, I just want more Sasha Dewan as well, though. I don't want him to be so greatest about. enemy. Like a lot of people mm. have pointed to that suggests the mark, like. The master. The master. Because I mean, as far as I'm aware, he's not metal. He's not part machine. He's definitely not a bronze Dalek, which talks like this. I am Neil Patrick Harris, and I am not a Dalek of normal Doctor. <laughs> Imagine if he Imagine talks he's like He's just that. the new voice of the Daleks. <laughs> yeah. I am dressed up like... Uh, he reminded me of Professor Yana. I was like, is that a multiverse Professor Yana story? A random throwback. Now, some, now it's led... That would be cool. It's led people to speculate, mm. to accumulate. So I'll read. I'll go through the one that isn't backed up by the um, set photos, possibly. Right. Okay. And then I'll go through the one that is. Okay. So a lot of people have said that I wouldn't like not putting it past Russell because we obviously we heard that beep the meep's fucking coming back. So anything's <laughs> anything, anything's up anything's for grabs on the table. Yeah, yeah. Um, that maybe Neil Patrick Harris, Harris, Harris. Yeah, Harris. Um, and it, you know, this would annoy people if he was American, but... Um, By the way, the episode title is How I Met Your Master. <sighs> oh, I like that. Yeah, Neil Patrick Harris, in case you don't know, literally the face of How I Met Your Mother. I haven't watched any of that show, but he's literally the poster child of that. Um, can I say um, something? Probably one of the best American sitcoms there is. It's better than Friends. Yeah. For me, better in terms of quality, better than Friends. Oh, okay, interesting. But, you know... Friends was not my generation, like it no, was like my parents' generation, but yeah. I watched it and enjoyed it and really like it, but for what I got out of How I Met Your Mother in terms of story and that, the ending's a bit shit, but... Yeah. Well, they've now done How I Met Your Father as well, haven't they? Which or is... That is soon? That's, the, that's on season one's on Disney+, Plus, mm. and that is basically a lot of people complain that this is just How I Met Your Mother again, but mm. different, and like I think they live in Lillian thingy's, um, what's-his-face apartment, 
Lillian, I don't know, I haven't known right. none of the car. Apart from Neil, I don't know none of the car. And Alison Hannigan from Alison Buffy. Hannigan, you've got yeah. Jason Segel, oh, yeah, you've got yeah, the guy shit. that plays Ted, you've got... Um... Seth, what, Seth MacFarlane? No, Ted, like Ted's his character name, like he's, oh, he's no. the titular father that's telling the story to his kids. Oh. And who else? Who else? Kobe Smulders. Maria Hill from yes. S.H.I.E.L.D., yeah. That's how she got the role. But, um... People have like speculated that um, maybe we are finally getting paid dividends to the Valyard, oh. because it has always been stated yes. that here, the like basically the dark distillation, somewhere mm. between your twelfth mm. and final mm. incarnation. Yeah, yeah. But at the time we thought because Time Lords only have thirteen lives, right? Exactly. So it's between 13th. the twelfth and thirteenth Doctor. Well, that's gone out the window. But twelfth and final is final yeah. isn't a number. So anywhere between your twelfth, which would technically be Matt, Matt Smith, Smith's at, well, as because the, the old bo- man. So one to eight is normal, yeah. and then nine, nine war, ten for Eccleston, eleven for tenant, twelve for tenant. Yeah, exactly because of the hand. So anywhere between yeah. second tenant and the future, because we know that it was Time Lord Science that was stopping the Doctor from regenerating forever. Mm-hmm. Yes. Which had a weird line in Kill Them. I don't know. It might not just keep regenerating forever. So maybe it was starting to eat back into his memory. I don't know. But, mm. Um, mm. Um, yes, I would be up for the Valiard because as as a the Valiard would be a one off essentially. Would. Yeah. But to have loads of different high profile people playing the Valiard because a lot of the theory is that the regeneration goes wrong either through something Yaz has to do to like fix the doctor or from just like her experiences and it just goes wrong and she's in tenant's body but she's still in the future but it's all pieced back together and she's like she's living her past is meant to be a thing so right okay because mm. there has also been a comment that Rachel Talali is not the only person returning from Moffat's era whether that be oh. behind or in front of the camera oh. we don't know oh exciting okay so it would be kind of cool if she like had to piece back together her life while she's flipping between like Tennant Tenet. Smith Capaldi McGann because he's the one that would still make sense like in he terms would. of look wise it wouldn't just be like here's this really old man being the doctor mm. like that's no hate to the others but just like mm. I don't know well, no, Davison, Davison as well. I think Davison at a push can still do it because yeah. he's still, you know, he was the youngest doctor. So I think he's only like mid, early sixties kind of thing. So I'm guessing, yeah, I imagine so, yeah, yeah. Whereas um, Baker, and Baker and Colin Baker, Tom Baker, and Sylvester McCoy are all quite a lot older. And cameo, yes, yeah, yeah. but um, ah, oh, just oh, okay. more more Majan. But that would be kind of cool if you could get like a whole profile thing, kind of maybe a thread of like Neil Patrick Harris is the Valyard, and then you have like um, another like really famous, like maybe you have fucking Morgan Freeman, like not like that, yeah, but like yeah, just yeah, someone yeah, like yeah. that stature, like a really Morgan. high profile. Samuel, Emma, Th- Emma Thompson, Jackson. I don't know. Samuel Jackson. Emma Thompson, like Emma Thompson. Um, yeah, who should have played the Doctor in the nineties? Let's be fair, but mm. the the so the Valyard or through supported. It seems um, set photos. Okay. Maybe you weren't wrong when you said Celestial Toy Maker because oh. there is a toy shop that has been erected oh. on set. Welcome Place. to. Oh, yeah, what is it? Does it have a name? <laughs> Mr. Emporium. Magic, game, tricks, puppets and bears, Brett, Spiel, marbles, skittles. It's Mr. McNaughton. Toys, games, Zoba tricks and board games. Mr. Emporium and something like Greatest toys in the galaxy or there's some kind of thing and it's basically like yeah this guy's maybe the celestial toy maker ha huh. which Ooh. i i am up for big time yeah. like a lot it's, it's the one animated reconstruction i want to see that and will in space um well yeah do it guys and release celestial toy maker if mm-hmm. possible Make it. Do you want more good news about who? Because we're kind of on it, so we'll talk about it. Go on. So this is from a Doctor Who page on Facebook. Um, So take, obviously, all of these things with like a pinch of salt, because until we know it or see it, it's not going to be confirmed. It's not confirmed. A new behind-the-scenes show has been commissioned for BBC Three called Doctor Who Unleashed, which will begin okay. to air in 2023 alongside the 60th anniversary. The show will be fronted by BBC radio presenter Stefan Powell. 
The show will be the same format as Confidential, which ran from 2005 to 2012. Why not just call it Confidential then? Exactly. Yeah, why not? Because if you went Doctor Who Confidential coming back, because BBC Three's on the telly, everyone would be like, oh my God, don't cancel CBBC. But um, stuff like that has been rumoured for a long time, because there was a rumour that um, it was going to be back and presented by various different people, including like our friend Dominic G. Martin and um, Billy from uh, Review of Death and... Uh, uh, he did Doctor Who Dark Dimension, didn't he? So that was the, your little review thing. Yeah, yeah, my little skit. My and little they were skit. just like, like um, when did this happen? When did it happen? Yeah. But um, I think that kind of thing needs to happen because Doctor Who... Kind of needs it. It's a good Doctor Who Confidential got me into wanting to be in TV and I will exactly. get there because I had this vivid dream. I'll tell you about it now. I don't know whether this is like foreshadowing anything, but mm-hmm. it was a different director, so maybe it was a different special. But I had a dream that Graham Harper was back. Graham Harper, okay, yeah, yeah. So I was out somewhere, I think with family, and like there was some filming going on, but then I saw a, like, a man in a coat walk past, and I was like, that's Graham Harper. Uh-huh. So like, ch- like, obviously this is all in a dream, chase after him, and I was like, look, just let, I don't mind if I just make the tea, can I just have a job on this production, for, like even if it's just for this episode, just so I can die happy, and then like I, got, I think something happened and then I woke up so I was like oh my god oh. And then, but then I was like <laughs> then I was like that's really weird that specifically it was Graham Harper but it wasn't Graham Harper how I remember him looking in Confidential sure. for previous episodes it was like that's a, it was a curator that's a, that's, no, that was, no, that was, it was curator Graham no, it was, Harper it was Graham Harper but like aged up and I was like <laughs> am I trying to see the future like what's happening what's here? happening here hmm. when was this last night or a couple two, nights ago two nights ago I think something like that and I was like I was literally, I was like, why am I, why is it Graham Harper? <laughs> Just pop up in your head. Because if why I was going to say, and this is no like insult to Graham Harper because he was in a fabulous director in the classic series and amazing when he returned under the Russell era. Um, really, like you can tell, like his episodes are fast, action packed and like he did a lot of the fucking really cool episodes like Utopia and stuff like that. Oh, right, and Waters okay. of Mars yeah. was his as well. Oh, okay. Arguably mm. one of one the, of the best. best Tenants episodes yeah. ever. And maybe one of the best of the revival yeah. for me, for my yeah. money. If not for the best, the whole the whole show maybe. Yeah, but if I was going to say in terms of a Russell, because Rachel Talale is a Moffat director. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If I was going to choose a um, Russell director, I would say Euros Lynn. Euros Lynn, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, was it? I think no, I think it's pronounced Eros. Eros Lynn, but um. One of like he was like young, brought on board like in two thousand and five. I think he did the first one was Unquiet Dead, and he did oh, right, okay. End of Time Part One and Two. Yeah. Like so, he was he was a constant yeah. throughout it. Like along with him, Graham, James Strong, um, Helen. No, Helen Raynor wrote one, but like one of like the constants. I think he did series two finale. That was stuff like that. he was um, like he was a very good director and has gone on to do I think other Bad Wolf. Like production thing, yeah. yeah. Okay. So like, I would have said him, but like, for it to be Graham Hopper is like, is that just a this is a fan servicey thing of, you know, mm, maybe a classic involved? I know. Cl- like, this can all mean fuck all because it was. <laughs> let's let's re- let's remind everyone in essence a fucking dream. A dream. But yeah, it was odd that it was Graham Harper. It's specific, yeah. Mm. Well, like I'm specifically never him. Never. never say never. So maybe I'll have a job in a few months. I don't know. <laughs> That's quite cool. Oh, I'd be happy for you if you did. Um, I'd be like, can I bring this guy that I know? Like, we just talk about bullshit. We should do fucking confidential. Let's be yeah, real. Yeah, why not? Doctor Who Unleash. We can unleash the confidential. We don't have to be confidential and private. We can bring Unlimited it out to the world. Unlimited power. Unlimited power. Uh, rice pudding, etc., etc. Did you know? Well, because a lot of this stuff, like, I end up seeing and then we send to each other anyway. Mm, but we got we we a the official title for the Knives Out sequel. Yeah, but it's a thing I weren't even aware of it existing. But no, I, I haven't Googled what it's called. So yet. it's called... Do you know what the name is? Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery. or Knives Out Story? Yeah, Knives Out Mystery, yeah. Yeah. Releasing this holiday season on Netflix. Because they signed for three, three Knives more, Out think, sequels, yeah. is not Yeah, They've got the rights. And, and got Ryan Johnson more. made all the fucking... Because it was like a £500 million pound deal or something. It's something like, ridiculous. Ryan Johnson was just like, fucking yeah, all right then. <laughs> Why not? Um, I can't wait to see it. I know we've had a few sort of teases of it's like another ensemble piece. Obviously, we're going to get Daniel Craig be the constant, which I kind of like that he's going to become like this fucking deep south 
fucking anthology detective. Anthology like Hercule Poirot next, yeah, kind of Yeah, next generation bastards. Sherlock Poirot detective. Yeah, yeah. Which isn't. Based, I'm glad. I don't think Knives Out. Sorry, I don't think Knives Out is based on anything. So I think it's an original. That no, is original. Idea. Original from Ryan Johnson. So it's good. It's good. So like yeah. he go anywhere. With it, it's it's an original IP. So it's like this is cool, mm. and. I can't wait to see it because I, I love Knives Out. Knives Out was one of my favourite films of 2019. It was, it was one of probably, the best experiences. No, was, yeah. I think it was third to Endgame and Rocket Man. Yeah. Like that it year. was in my top five, I think. As well. um, yeah, it was great. It was really good. Like It's so well made, so well written, so well directed. And Ryan Johnson, for everyone that hated on Star Wars, Last, Last Jedi, Jedi. Yeah. he's a very competent filmmaker and that's why for me Last Jedi is one of my favourites. Have you seen Looper from him? I, I, Looper. I like Looper but I think because t- it was at the same sort of point as Inception so I was like it's, is it trying to go for the same thing of let's yeah. be really clever and big and try and confuse you and be like, like in a loop clever. Yeah. did you know that um, Bruce Willis refused to wear prosthetics for that yeah because yeah. they wanted to because obviously George, Joseph Gordon-Levitt plays the younger version of him, of him so yeah. they wanted to meet in the middle right Yeah. because they have obviously very different faces but that's why if you think Joseph Gordon-Levitt's face looks weird it's because he's got Bruce Willis prosthetics on to match him uh, up to to be him to, so that, cause but Bruce, Bruce wouldn't do it for Joseph yeah because they were gonna, it was going to be like a halfway house so that like because they have very different shaped faces yeah, so it would have kind of like yeah. they would have met in the middle and like so it wouldn't have been one or the other but it was like Bruce was like nah fuck that <laughs> nah thanks and Joseph Gordon-Levitt has prosthetics on because it's mainly around like his jawline and yeah. sort of like his his eyes I believe yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've seen, I saw it a while ago, and I to me that didn't stick out. But yeah, I just noticed that yeah, they were meant to be playing the same guy, and like, as you pointed out, they don't have the same facial or DNA structure. They don't exactly look alike. It's like us too. We don't really look alike. It's only the hair on our face. <laughs> the hair on our chinny chin chins. But yeah, so uh, yeah, I like Looper, and I just I love a Ryan Johnson. There's movie. another one. There's Brick. From 2005, like I think it's his first feature, and then there's one in between that and Looper. So he's mm. done like five things, plus yeah. Knives Out, and whatever else he's doing. And we can he be waiting, because it's fabulous. Um, what else? So James Bond is apparently... So there's... This is another strong rumor because obviously there's a really good. Um, we've talked about him before, but Calvin Dyson did a video, yeah. I think, yesterday or the day before... Where okay, he okay. rated and talked about all the potential rumored candidates for James, James Bond. Okay, cool. So he did them basically into like he get. I think it was, it was a full martini or a spilled martini was his rating, and he ba- he based it off of his personal preference, like in terms of like what you think they could do, like if they would work as James Bond and the probability of it. Right. Like okay, he said, in, that would be in terms of age, star power, and like, longevity. like how expe- yeah, longevity, yeah. expensiveness. So he went. So I think he started with Henry Cavill, and worked his way through some people that I was like, huh, there's ones that I haven't personally because I, I know there's like you know in like the bookies they have like every name under the sun up to like James Gordon and shit exactly. on there. Yeah. But I've never like, I've always sort of like seen the same six to eight people. Yeah, I think I have. But Without naming names, yeah. Yeah, I and. Two of the people I didn't see on there because this isn't a spoiler for the video, but John Boyega and Daniel Kaluuya weren't on there. Okay, yeah. And like it was one of the things he was like, if I've missed out anyone that you think would be a good James Bond, like let me know. Like I'd put it in, in the there. comments or whatever. Yeah. But he mentioned like your Henry Golding's, your Idris Elba's, and things like that. Jesus. It's a real so like he was obviously like Idris Elba. Like ideally, if the film was coming out tomorrow, and they'd yeah. already had it in the can, then yes. But obviously, the way the production yeah. cycle was worked for these movies, it's not. Gonna we're be not going to get ideal. two no. to three out of them. No, exactly. No. But his, I think his top pick is at the moment is Nicholas Holt, which I was like, mm, I've never really liked him Being outside of Skins. Him. Yeah, like yeah. he was fabulous in that, and then he's never really played Beast properly. So no, was, exactly. But um, he doesn't talk about Fast Bender and things like that. Like he has some great people in there, so um, give it a watch. I need to, he said it was a couple of days ago because I haven't been on his channel recently. It's, I'll check it out. It's, check I've, it out. it's two to three days. I either watched it the day before yesterday or yeah. like the day before that. Like, I, I watched it and I was like, oh, because it's Fascinating list. about 20, 25 minutes, I think, oh, maybe. that's not bad. Yeah, that's not bad. But it goes through everyone and, like, there's some... Names that you hadn't personally thought of, yeah. all seen listed. And then you hear them and you're like, mm, yeah. And then even, like, the obvious ones are like, that doesn't make sense because, obviously, they're too intrinsically linked to this franchise or they're exactly. too old and I do... And, like, even Contracts. Says, <laughs> even says for some of them, like, I think Michael Fassman's one is, like, I... If they did, if Daniel Craig would have stopped after Skyfall, he would have been perfect. And he cites the um, Nazi hunting scene in First Class. It was like, 
you just get that vibe from him. And I think he would have linked well with Christoph Waltz and that kind of blow fell. Yes, brothery as well. Michael Fassbender was in that role. Yeah. So he like he says like he like he even says like I, I mourn some of the James Bonds that these guys would have been like they would have been amazing but you know either age or star power or they're too like he even said because Tom Holland talks about his one Tom, before yeah. and he even says like Tom Holland's too expensive like you're meant to go he up in, you're meant to go up in price but how, how where do you where do you set the boundary for him and where do you go to exactly but um, yeah it's a really interesting watch and um, Idris Elba has reportedly um, been back in talks to play James Bond because apparently they'd conducted a super duper market research that has proved that he is the most popular James Bond. <laughs> okay. I, so, I I wish like he's one that I was like he would have been fabulous. A few years back. Yeah. yeah. Because he's, like we said previously, yeah. He's either late forties or early fifties. Like yeah. he like the thing is Idris Elba is a like no homo. He is a gorgeous man. He is. Like he is a be- like he is a beautiful man in good shape. He does not look his age. Uh, and he's a 49. 49 49 he's a fucking amazing actor as well and if he was like early 40s late 30s then yeah yes yeah. all fucking day long because everything he's in he brings this like sexy charm suaveness he just oozes charisma oozes charisma intensity and, and he just, can do yeah, the he gritty. can he can do the intensity but he can also do the softer mo- like you see a lot of his work like he can do like it's not just the hard nuts, like the emotional underlying stuff that makes him tick as a character in like pieces Infinite. like Luther that oh, like when yeah. like that gets developed on further because he is a bit sort of one note in series one, but as he grows into that role, he he fucking knows that character inside and out and what makes him tick and what makes him act the way he is. Like he's a he's a fantastic actor, and he would have been amazing. So, and a lot of people have said like, is it going to be the new way to go of in terms of? Like the Doctor, you get an up and comer who's famous but not too well on known. the radar. Maybe yeah. you do a couple of like big bombastic like blockbusters with Sorry, an Idris Elba, yeah, yeah. kind yeah, of thing someone. like a, a superstar. Maybe get the general audience back into it because they I know they want to reinvigorate it and get more young people involved in it. Yeah, um, yeah. it's why I think if Kingsman had not happened, certainly not a second one, I think Taron Egerton would have been perfect for Bond. let's back to basics, get the young people involved kind yeah. of thing yeah, yeah but you can still do that i believe with the likes of john boyega daniel kaluuya who have appeal from like john boyega especially like because being in star wars he's going to yeah, bring a younger yeah, audience with him yeah, yeah daniel kaluuya was obviously um i don't know if he's in wakanda forever but obviously he had a good role I in think, black panther and his roles in like get out and other such things have, like put him on the map in terms of he that, is a quality actor he is no, he's, he's come a long way from being in planet of the dead so <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. No, he's in Wakanda forever. Nope's also out soon. End of July. Yes, July twenty. Light is out this week. End of the week. Yeah, this end, end of, of the this week. week. I think same time that the Spider Men go on Disney Plus. I know, but not Spider Man three. Not Far From Home, and obviously no No Way Home. Not yet, but this is it. so. This is the start of the Netflix. No, the Sony yeah, Disney like, Plus deal yeah. that there was like we're going to take it from the other streaming services and they'll go on Disney Plus for two years, definitely. Hundred percent. I think it will. It will. Um, they'll get renegotiated down the yeah. line. So at, th- at this moment in time, going on the, this Friday, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, June the seventeenth will be um, Sam Raimi's Spider Man and Spider Man Two, amazing uh, Mark Webb's Amazing Spider Man One, One and two. two, and John Watts's Spider Man Homecoming. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, like you said, no word yet of Far From Home, No Way Home. We know that those two, both the Venoms, Morbius, mm. Spider, and the Spider Verse films, will go on there at some point because they said it would be over like the next few months and then stay on there for up to two years. But until they realise that they're all on one place, so we'll just place. negotiate and Disney will probably pay them more money and then eventually buy them out. Anyway. What, what if Morbius Two, Morbin Time, was a Disney Plus original? If you've seen it, there was a petition that they started to get it released a third time. I know. It was called, we were busy that weekend, please release Morbius one more time. But that's out today on Blu-ray. Today? That's what I, I saw I an advert on Facebook that was like, own it, own it today on Blu-ray and 4K. Jesus. For we Amazon, June 27th. Oh. It's the 15th. I saw it on Facebook, maybe it's um, America. Possibly. Maybe it was an American maybe. advert. Maybe. Because it was like, only on digital and 4K and Blu-ray now. Is it 
it says pre order. Yeah, June June twenty seventh. June twenty seventh. Anyway, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm probably going to end up buying it, but I'm not going to enjoy it. <laughs> no, I'll enjoy Matt Smith dancing over and over again. <laughs> That, that song's a catchy banger as well. That song's weird, but it's catchy. Yes. Um, so eventually the Spider-Verse stuff and all that will go on there as well. That's interesting. I think that's going to bring up a lot more traffic. I don't, for... know that, don't think this is legit. Hawkeye DVD? Don't know. Chief Sanders Liver. Go scroll down. Yeah. But Dispatch from Amazon RE... sold by Ventec. Ven... Yeah. 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 No, don't know who they are. I'd love it if I because they said at the moment the plan because they changed it from never to the plans are not at the moment to release the Disney Plus stuff. I think they will because they physical media like point. that's even more money for like the Disney Plus. It is is if like if because uh, say twenty million people in the world buy a copy of One Division. Yeah, exactly. Like you get ten million by Loki, kind of thing. You get that's more money to put back into your own product. So why wouldn't you do it? Do it. Do it. Um, yes. Um, on the Spider-Verse train, I, I love that... Uh, we've, had, we've had a bit of news about um, Across the Spider-Verse. Oh, images. And, um, previously, um, Across the Spider-Verse mm. Part 1. Now, just Across the Spider-Verse, because it's beyond... Beyond, I think. It's beyond. Yeah. So, uh, Shaya Wiggum has been cast as the voice of George Stacey um, mm-hmm. in Across the Spider-Verse in Hayley Steinfeld's universe so the George mm. Stacy from that universe I believe um, I've not heard of him or seen him in anything I don't think so Cher Wingham I know the name and I have looked him up on and off I don't yeah I don't know if I know him or not I just know the name I know he has been in things mm-hmm. while you look it up I will say that we got confirmation who the villain is yeah it's, we not, Oscar, it's not Oscar Isaac's Spider-Man 2099 even though they've had a fight but the spot the spot. The fucking spot. A Z-list Spider-Man 90s villain. animated cartoon villain. Yeah, the spot. Um, meet the spot. Miles Morales is most formidable foe yet. Voiced by Jason Schwartzman. See him in action in Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse exclusively in movie theatres June 2nd, 2023. Um, still cannot wait for this movie. I'm gu- like, I'm sad that we're not getting it Christmas this year, but like... No. Whenever we get it, as long as it's you know taking the time to make it perfect, but we got the spot who can travel dimensions using a bit. Using, using using literally, spots. he shoves a bit of black on it and he goes through his black portal. Yeah, the like spot. that's that's great. I, I fucking love it. The spot getting <laughs> the being spot. a main antagonist in a Spider-Man movie. But is he a henchman villain or is he the main, 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 main villain? Main. I think we can like there'll be a mix up between Miguel O'Hara and Miles, and then it'll be like, who's this fucking who's this geezer? Guy? Uh, is that you from another dimension? Yes, but funny enough, he doesn't have spiders on him. He's, he's got this black goo he throws around and he can walk through dimension. Maybe, maybe there will be a... We talked about um, the Spider-Man extended thing coming out. The extended... The, the more, more fun stuff version. What yeah. Called. More fun stuff. Which is only at this moment in time in America and Canada. And September the 2nd at the moment. So whether we ever get that, I doubt... But I'm not. Yeah, I'm not, not against, against it. it because maybe it'll make some more money and push it a bit higher up the table. Yeah. Um, the people, table of love. I'm people, looking for if there's people any more. People go and see it anyway. So. Okay. So, Marvel's Thunderbolts has been rumored mm. for a very long time. It has. Yes. There's rumored to have been confirmed that there is a movie, a Thunderbolts movie, moving forward with um, Jake. Schreier directing. I said if I said butchered your name, mate, I'm sorry. Um but and do you know the rumoured lineup? No, not the team no. So the Thunderbolts is basically sort of pseudo Dark Avengers, kind of. But it's like an like military team. Kind of suicide squad ish. They said yeah, it kinda of would be the ar- maybe, maybe be their answer to the Suicide Squad, but I like it as a thing of like, well, do we have Avengers? Well, we kind of have these guys. Are they necessarily good? So the rumored lineup is Ava Star, Ghost. Ava Star, okay. Ava Ghost Star. from um, Go- Ghost and the Wasp. Wasp. Okay, yeah, cool. Abomination. Yeah, makes sense. Yes. What? Yeah. Taskmaster. Uh huh. Well, dead, right? No, the she... woman, Antonio. No, she... Dra- Draco's daughter didn't die. die. No, Draco. Her dad did. 
Yeah, but she didn't die. Oh, she's, okay. No, she, I think she just sort of like walks away like, I have to go now. My planet needs me. <laughs> um, John Walker, US agent. Yeah, fair enough, yeah. Yelena Belova. Uh-huh. Baron Helmet Zemo. Uh-huh. And then these last two. Right. Are you and ready? And they're exciting. Uh, yeah. I'll sa- okay, I'll save this one. Mm-hmm. That seems like this could be very much real. Well, they both could be, but also like the last one would be more fun. Well, after John Are you ready? Ski, Mr. Fantastic, sort of give me if he doubts I'm ready for anything. Reprising yeah. his role. His role as... Mike Coulter as Luke Cage. Oh. And... Finn Jones as Iron Fist. No. No, 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 no. no. More fun than that, dear boy. John Byrne for his Punisher. I w- that would be good. Like He would fit in he here. He would fit in with that. But maybe he's too depressing for Thunderbolts. Possibly. Maybe. But then if you're making like a... A, suicidal, a cheap suicide yeah. you wouldn't want the most suicidal bloke on the team exactly. but, um, yeah. uh, possibly okay. reprising his role before his movie comes out Blade Wade Wilson himself oh Deadpool Ryan Reynolds is Deadpool oh shit <laughs> Deadpool on the Thunderbolts oh. Um, oh. I think I speak for everyone when I say yes yes please yes mummy please yes fucking please yeah. yes Ooh. fucking please right fucking now oh that would be so good right that would be a fun team that would be a I, good do you know team. what it's, I really like if it is Luke Cage that would be a lot of fun yeah because we've had it's almost like we're getting them seeded one by one we know that Kristen Ritter has apparently filmed something oh because that was rumoured before oh, that she was okay. spotted around with a with Jessica Jones style outfit on so we've had Secret Invasion maybe. we've had Matt Murdock and we know we've he's getting a, he's yeah. getting a continuation at some point exactly we've had Kingpin return and we know that he's out there and about and will be involved in some capacity in Echo exactly and he's probably not yeah. dead because why no, would you why kill would you off? kill him off just to bring him back yeah um, yeah Kristen Ritter has, yes. like you say just filmed something They what we know that they before they were peddling maybe a John Bernthal Punisher series on Hulu but we know that the Punisher will be involved in some capacity and they want John Bernthal to stay. If Mike Coulter does return as Luke Cage, then I think that all the book confirms that Finn Finn Jones has to be Iron Fist. Heroes for Hire. Yeah. A a six-part Disney Plus show, Heroes for Hire, I would fucking watch the shit out of. We would watch it on here every day. That would be all our content would be. We would change our name to Heroes for Hire. (laughs) Pasty Heroes for Hire. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I'm happy with all of that. Yes. Like all fucking day, yes fucking please. Like okay. I would, ah, like Mike Cole is a such a good Luke Cage as well. Like he is such a good Luke Cage. Like it's ridiculous. Like they all are. I think a different script for Finn Jones and someone that cares about Iron Fist. I think that maybe you make um, you make Destin the, Daniel Cretton do a spin off exactly, and then you can make him cross over like Shang Chi yeah. and do their martial arts team up movie. Yeah, oh God, that that would be. Yeah. So as you know, ridiculous as the Thunderbolts movie might sound, it's lo- it's liking more and more or less it's going to happen at some point. I, I yeah, I I like I dig it. Just like a bit, I dig it. Um, fucking brilliant. Uh, that nah, that. Nah. Sorry, I'm but just. We checking. also know Eric Pearson is going off of, going on to that subject, but Eric Pearson from Black Widow is the one writing the script as well. For Thunderbolts. Is he? Yeah, so one of the Black Widow writers is actually writing it. Mm hmm. That's fair enough. Um, that and that. I'm trying to find the director, but I can't seem to find anything on him. The director. Director. <laughs> you have not been kind to me, Jeff Goldblum. Well, you, uh, did. Mm, Jeff Goldblum, have you so have you seen the Jurassic Elephant in the room? No, I am seeing it to so um, me and La because we were like mm. she was like I've never seen a 4DX film and I was like I'm pretty sure we went to see 1917 and 4DX and just because it wasn't yeah it wasn't exactly because I think we saw movie. you there didn't we? Believe then yeah because it was I know just, you it was, saw me it was one just of, to yeah. like accentuate the thing like it wasn't major and I was like I want to see Top Gun because that's going to be mental like in 4DX it, yeah. so I might it be was. seeing that Saturday. Because I've got, so me and Connor have got a friend that we used to work with, his wedding on on Friday, and then La is taking her and the baby, have got my cousin's baby shower, so there La's like, in the day, shall we go and see Top Gun? And we were talking about, me and her were talking about Jurassic World, so I think we're seeing that tomorrow, 
we just got to confirm that we have a babysitter. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we want to do it in 4DX, so it would be the half eight one. Okay. Because it would probably be if her sister's watching and she doesn't get back till she, we wouldn't get back in time to go to the um, yeah, five twenty one. I think it's the only exactly. other one. Yeah. So I want to I want to do four DX for that. So we will be seeing that and we will talk about it in depth next week. It's got bad Rotten Tomatoes reviews, but also oh I'll say it's good luck. Have you seen it? Yeah. Your brief thoughts. Uh, nothing changes by the end. And this is meant to be the final entry so far. There's no word on the sequel. Do you feel like... So it was originally confirmed of like, this is the last of all of it. They were tying it all up. Do you think something may have changed for them to be like, we can make more of it if the if if the appeal, basically if it made enough money and the appeal for more dinosaur movies and if, is there? And if the, yeah, Do you think if, they've left it open on purpose to come back later? Yeah, but ideally I want to see it when I'm like... 30 years old with kids of my own I don't really want to see another one anytime soon it's that bad I don't it's just nah it weren't my movie at all it is no. are the returning characters mm. are they are they done justice like you're watching the original so, you, so you're watching two separate movies with Sam Neill um, Laura Dern and Jeff Goldblum doing their thing are they really good they're, yeah, they're more than fine is it the Jurassic World team that are the let down Chris Pratt you forget is in the movie he gets done dirty. No, sometimes he's that's not a bad yeah. thing. Oh no, but honestly, you forget that he's like the lead across this trilogy, and then it's worse than Finn, Ray, and Poe meeting in the first ten minutes of Rascal, and then being like, "Oh my god, we're a team!" Oh, we actually, you know, ooh. and you ask when you think but you haven't met. They don't meet until the last thirty minutes. All six of them don't meet until the last half hour. Who is the third? Who is the third person in the Jurassic World? Oh, so you so you've got. Chris Pratt, Bryce Dallas Howard, and then the clone daughter from Fallen Kingdom. Oh, so she's become the I'm the other one. I'm yeah, the kid I'm the from Jurassic Park one that gets electrocuted to make it six. Yeah, I feel yeah. I like that because I like that aspect because I think Fallen Kingdom is my favourite so far out of the world trilogy. The world stuff, yeah. Okay. And I would yeah. say maybe it is second or third. Normally, for all these podcasts, I normally rewatch all the franchise entries in preparation for the new instalment. That's just the way I do things. Jurassic Park, nice I watched, refresher, yeah. I just I couldn't do it. I just couldn't. I got I did Jurassic Park one again. Not shit on Jurassic Park. Cool movie, inspired loads of things. One of the effects. best movies of. It's time. great, but the first hour is them walking around the park for me a bit too long. The first. No, I love it. It's suspenseful. For me, for me, yeah, that, yeah. for me, it's the Jaws effect of you're not seeing. But if it. I had nostalgia on my side, if I grew up watching it, then yeah, you know, perhaps I'd be saying completely different. But well, that's the thing for me. Like it was one of them films that like my dad showed me at a young age. Like Ridiculous he got me, into, so age, it was yeah. like I saw. I like I watched stuff like Jurassic Park, E. T. Um, mm, yeah, seeing E. T. Um, Back to the Future, um, Terminator, and stuff came later on. So like sort of like the classic cult movies. Like I would, I saw it at a young age, and it was. Part of your DNA. Yeah. yeah. Part of my dino DNA. Yeah, dino, dino. So, Good like, I have DNA. a lot of love for Jurassic Park in general. Like, I know it was before my time, like, by a couple of years, but, like, by the time I got around to see it, it was already magical. A cult yeah. classic, and a fir- it's a firm favourite of mine just because it's so well done and still holds up that I think that is the amazing thing. And obviously, it was, you know, let's make a sequel out of it because it was great and big in the 90s, that kind of thing. Yeah, that kind it? of thing. It was like, oh, we'll do another one. Um, um, yeah. Did you watch two and three? So I did Lost World, didn't finish it, but I remember it a lot I, more. I like Lost World. I, so do I. I think it's a more fun, engaging concept. I mean, there is bits that aren't done as well, and it is it becomes a bit yes. generic and the characters aren't as nowhere near as strong as the cast from the first. But I think Jeff Goldman does a damn good job at trying to carry it. Can we argue that it's got one of the best tran- scene transitions in cinematic history with the screaming woman and switching to the train sound as he's like... I like that yeah. at the train station. <laughs> that is inspired iconic shit. Stuff. Iconic, That's iconic amazing. Stuff. And I think on my day, I might like both sequels better than Jurassic World, mm. just because they do a lot of more fun. St- like I know it's like a and here's another park and here's a thing, but there's a lot of fun stuff and it's got the bones of a good story and it's got no, no, the, it a cast that are into it. Mm. Whereas it was a. Uh, 
Because who who was originally meant to be doing Jurassic World before Chris Pratt? It was someone. I don't, I think. Know. I don't even know. I don't know. I think he would play someone. It was like someone like Daniel Craig or someone like that, like a big name actor. But it kind of was like, uh, well, he Chris Pratt's out. up and coming, and he's just on Guardians of the Galaxy. He seems like a safe vanilla bet kind of thing. And it's not to shit on him in these mo- like these movies. Like he's been, I think Jurassic World is his strongest performance. I think yeah, out of the three, yeah, yeah, I'd say. But I like him in all of them, that he's just a bit of, like, we've got to have generic action guy and a name on the poster kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. So do you get more of that in um, or, or, or Dominion? More generic, what, like, more is, generic is it just poster a kind of, guy? Isn't it, is it a kind of thing of, like, he's just here for the action beats? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, honestly, I'm not even trying to shit on it, because um, I had someone pop into work yesterday, and the first thing that came up was, how was Jurassic World? And I was just went, oh, no. <laughs> it's just, no, I'm very rarely like, no, don't go and see it. But honestly, I just if you're if you're especially on that train of nostalgia and you really care about the franchise, just, and you think it's like the Avengers Endgame crossover of like generation meets generation, and you're like, it should be this. It it's wherever you're thinking, it's not going to hit those levels. It just doesn't. It's a shame. But I don't want to dampen your expectations either. Well, no, because it also it might do the thing of like I, that then lowers my expectations, so I might enjoy it more, more for perhaps. baseline. Because yeah. I think you had it's one that I honestly we'd... didn't care about, but yeah, I knew I was always going to watch it. I think it. you have the phrase that we've coined as multiverse of madness syndrome, which is where you've gone in expecting high standards and been like, oh, this is like not bad, but this is discernibly average in terms yeah. of what we were promised. And because even Chris Pratt like quoted it as saying it was like the end game of. Jurassic World movies. Oh yeah, but that's so misleading because just to me, the ending of you're telling Kingdom, me that Jeff Goldblum does Kingdom. not ride a dinosaur oh, and punch Thanos in the face. Unfortunately, no. What the Dream fuck? on, you Reddit users, you keyboard warriors. And then he snaps and goes, "Life uh, 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 finds a uh, uh, way." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be incredible. Do you know who? He, I think he gets good in the third act. He he does his bit in the third. I'm like, okay, he he's he's back. I just think because the dialogue, got, the you... script's terrible. If, the the if, scenes are too quick. If yeah. we'd have Sorry. only seen like Jeff Goldblum in that cameo-ish thing in yeah. Jurassic World and um, Fallen Kingdom, I'd have been like, "That's fine," because that alludes to like the stuff out there. He's one of the experts. He's talking. He's about He's done it. this shit before. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like if you did alluded to the other, but it's the fact that it's like, and here they are. They're back together again, and this is great, and this is going to culminate everything that's happened since the first yeah, no, one. But, I mean, and I mean, no disrespect to, to the Park trio, but it doesn't feel like they they, they naturally fit into this world trilogy. Mm-hmm. It just feels like they have been shoehorned. Let's get more money in. Oh, look, let's get the audience back. Let's do a separate movie with these guys taking down some business. That's a rival of like a, a spin off of InGen. And basically, the movie is about these killer mosquito things. Not even dinosaurs. It's about fucking bugs in the field that make weird crop circles. And basically, they've got to take down this evil company. Well, you have Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard, who does some really cool stuff, solo bits with her. Um, and then you have, like, the kid from the third one. They're trying to be the awkward family. You've got Blue, the dinosaur, who's gone off with her blue dinosaur mother. And it's, you know, they're trying to do, like, dino family reunion. You know, human dinosaur cook collab where I was there trying to take down a business corporation and in the last half an hour oh look huh you look like you look like you're from a movie I know 30 years ago huh Jurassic World not a fan that's a line Jeff Goldblum says he goes Jurassic World not a fan he said it, it, it feels very, very meta, meta. it's like meta, yeah. mm, you're kind of talking about this whole movie <laughs> but um yeah no Jeff Goldblum does his thing in the third act and he carries it but everyone just doesn't make give a shit about meeting each other it just feels like they're on screen just because the movie requires it. You're watching two separate movies and then they mesh awkwardly and it just ends. And then it very much ends with, Din- uh, without spoiling, dinosaur humans, maybe see you next time, Jurassic World, but as of time of Googling, there's no plan. So see you whenever, yeah. kids. This is definitely the end, unless it, we want to make more money exactly, in Exactly, this, this is the end. Uh, but there's no sense of an ending. Mm. There's no sense of culmination. There's no end game payoff where you're like, so I've not, watched this. It's not wrapping anything up. It's just a, here's a big special thing and maybe we'll do more of it and maybe this could maybe, be the end Maybe, movie. yeah, maybe. But honestly, the way it is, I don't see it anytime soon. It's unfortunate. It sucks. I mean, it'd suck more for me if I was like a big, long, lifelong, passionate fan. But I, I just, I, no, it just didn't do absolutely not much at all. It's one of them series that hasn't needed to happen. Like you could have no, just had Jurassic Park and been and done been with it. Done with it, exactly. Yeah. But Jurassic Park two and three were obviously made, and it kind of was like, all right, let's leave it alone. But it was like Universal were. I've got, hmm, I've something... got, I've got no inspiration to sort of go back and see that because I know Jurassic Park three was like shat on at the time. But I don't want to feel like is that now better than Dominion? But I feel like I could go back and compare. It might I'd... make certain movies look better li- than they I... have. Yeah, after Dominion, I like honestly. Jurassic Park three. 
Yeah. For its stupidness. Jurassic Park 3 Ellen. Might, be, might be great. It might be great after this movie. Ellen. Ellen. Oh, I don't know. It's, just, it's one of those where I just thought, what, what happened with this movie? What, what happened? I suppose we'll never... Truly, I truly no. No, I don't know. It just—it wasn't one of those that I walked out of, and I was like, "Oh, it was good, but bits of it were sloppy." Like the whole—the dialogue is atrocious. The script is terrible. The, their dialogue amongst all the characters are very short and sweet. Um, hmm. There's awkward transitions. The dinosaurs are fucking dumb in this movie. <laughs> you get a cool dinosaur fight at the end. I'll give it that. I'll give it you know, cool dinosaur props at the end. Um, but then, honestly, it goes on for way too long. The runtime is atrocious. Because it's the longest movie out of all of them, I think. Jesus, how um, long? It's, I think it's about two and a half hours. Two hours and 28 or something like that. Fallen Kingdom might be like five minutes behind, but you feel the runtime. I don't know. It, after, it got better again as it went on like in the second hour, but the first hour you're just watching two separate movies and you're thinking, right, how are they going to organically go and meet? And you literally find out before the end. And it's like, okay, right. Um, yeah, it's just one that I wasn't really a big fan of. It just didn't do a lot. There was just little things that bugged me as it was going on. The lines were just awkward. Nothing was really funny until like Jeff Goldblum does his thing in the third act. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just I can't say it was a huge disappointment for me because it one I was really wasn't caring about. But it was just you know when you see a bad film and you're like, no, that was just poor. No, it was no. poor. Oh, you have lost. <laughs> it, and especially with the whole oh, it's an end game type event. Oh, it, you know. They're all coming back. You, you've come back for a cash grab. I'm sorry. You've Hooray! come back for a cash grab. That's Hooray just, for cash! That's the movie summed up, folks. I'd say don't well, waste your fucking time if it was me. Well, we'll talk about that in depth next yeah. week once I've seen it. And Top Gun Maverick, by the sounds of it. But um, Way better. Something, Way we, time. something I did really enjoy <laughs> more of. I've not watched episode... Was it episode five today? I, yeah, I think so. I've not seen it yet. Of General Kenobi. General We've got one Kenobi. week left at time of recording. But, um, sad, I don't know. Very sad. Hmm. Um, no, we talked about it last week, didn't we? Episode four? Yeah, oh, we, we did. did the first three. I don't hmm. think we'd watched four. What happened in four? I've forgotten. It was the New Hope episode. that He does a lot of sneaking around. Oh, sneaky, sneaky on the special base. base. Which, yes. is, which is from Jedi Fallen Order, which I didn't even clock. It's from I didn't Jedi because Fallen I've not Order. finished Jedi Fallen Order. Oh, spoiler! No, so, anyway, um, sorry. Spoiler. Just going back on Jurassic Park stuff. <laughs> mm, like, I yes. think the reason that I liked it more and sort of fell in love with it, which I do, is because of the Lego games. I didn't even finish that Lego game. Did you not? <laughs> just, so, I couldn't. Yeah, so, yeah. I, like, I liked the Telltale game, but it was buggy as fuck. It was on oh, PlayStation yeah, was 3 and PC. 2007, and I want to say. Eight. I think it got ported like 2010, 11 time. But it's one of the early games. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's an early game. Um, it so, because I am. Like I've said, obsessive compulsive, and I really get into like, like the Lego games. I always wanted to just complete one because I'd yeah. got any on hundred percent. Yeah, and then I completed and got all the achievements in like Lego Marvel Superheroes, and that just went. Oh, let's do them all. Let's and, do Dra- and the dress- Lego Jurassic World was one of my favorites because it was a different IP. Yeah, yeah, of course. It went across at the time. It was just the four films. The four films, yeah. Because Dominion and Fallen Kingdom weren't, weren't even were existing. They dis- weren't even out. Because it was a 2015 game. 2015 game. And then, yeah, yeah, it was three years before the next one came out. It was along the similar thing of like, we got a Lego Star Wars Force Awakens for some reason. Yeah, for whatever reason. And also with um, Lego The Hobbit, because it only has the first two films and the third film DLC never came out. Yeah, it never got made. So I I like that. And like when I play those kind of games that are like with the Harry Potters, like it makes you want to go back and just absorb it all. Just complete it. Yeah, yeah. So like I've watched the Marvel stuff. While playing like the games, yeah, yeah, and yeah. things like that, um, and Jurassic World, Lego Jurassic World really helped me with that, and it was one of the more enjoyable ones. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. So yeah, that's that was just my last thing on that because on Jurassic. um, on yeah. Jurassicness. Um. We. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Obi Wan Kenobi, great New Hope episode, Fallen Order is another thing I need to finish. Mm. I'm in the middle of like finishing a setup, looking after a child, and kind of just gathering my life together again. Yeah, of course. Before of course. I have um, free time, but I I think I, it's safe to say now. I think at this moment in time that we should be doing a live stream for the finale of Miss Marvel be, at oh, this point. Okay, at this point, I think yeah. because we're four weeks away, so I feel like that's wait. I th- there's only six of Miss Marvel. I thought that was six. longer as well. Six. No, there's only six. Okay, all right. So it's about four weeks. So we should be able to do that. Um, hmm. and maybe Jedi Fallen Order will be one of the games we played but also because I picked up 
So we went to. This is just boring about my life now. So um, because everything's expensive, like as there's still course. quite a very cheap shop to do like the weekly shopping, and they had Guardians of the Galaxy on Xbox Series X for twenty four pounds. On the so, Square Enix game, not the Telltale one. Not the Telltale yeah. one. No, um, the very fun and creative Guardians game. Yeah. yeah. So, Why did you buy it? I bought it. Twenty four quid. I fucking treated myself, man. And um, you, I, you haven't booted it up yet, no. I just haven't had time. Yeah, really. no, 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 no. I was just asking. Yeah, if, I Once to we get, get your first well, thoughts. yeah. Um, but I, it, that's possibly one of the games that I want to play on there. Fallen Order. Um, I've got both the Shadow and Mordor and Shadow stuff. of War stuff that I got for free on Gold years ago and years still ago. have never played. Yeah, yeah. So maybe we'll do some of that. Maybe. Mm. Um, but mm. I, because, um, she got me another game for because it was there was loads of games that were it was just like so cheap and I was like because you had like Lego fucking. DC super villains and shit like that. You had like loads of the old ones that were there as well. Just but, that dream, um, yeah. A certain Lego game that came out recently was bought for me, with the, in- the intention of giving it to me for Father's Day. So once I have that, we'll definitely be playing that, because I'm a Lego slag. <laughs> Lego slag. Slago. Slago. Um, but I want to talk about Thor: Love and Thunder for a moment, if I may. Right, because okay. as you, Chris Hemsworth's toy looks at us, we got confirmation that the runtime will be the shortest since 2018. We got an hour 59 minutes. Mm. Again, worries me. Like, mm. I think Doctor Strange was missing 20 minutes. Yeah. But then maybe a Thor film can feel more quick. Ga- how long was how... Ragnarok? How long was Ragnarok? 2.15? I want to say. Um oh, 2.15. I uh, missed that. It's, it, yeah, Thor, it's still a good 15 Ragnarok. minutes. Ragnarok. Hmm. Um. Fucking. Who is it? Ragnarok. Run Two hours ten. I oh, thought. So, well, okay, so ideally ten minutes then. Yeah. You're missing. Okay. But I'm still. I'm still up for it. I'm still. I'm not worried about it. No. Um. It's gonna apparently contain flashbacks to fill in the breakup between Thor and Jane. Which yes, I like yeah. that it's kind of retroactively filling a plot hole that no, was kind no, of it's, like... It's a neutral just, dumping. She yeah. dumped me. It was neutral dumping. So we'll see what happens with that. We'll see how that affects her coming back as Mighty Thor and how it upsets all the really um, egotistical shallow males in yes. the fandoms. Yeah. Um, including the relationship's ultimate demise is such a great line. <laughs> but yeah, I really like... It's a film that I think is... It's gonna be. It's a safe bet, I think. Like Molly yeah, Madness was meant be. to, like, be risky, but like full of loads of cameos and stuff. But with a Thor film made by Taika Waititi, I think it's like, we know what we're gonna get. Even though he, I read an article yesterday. He said he, he promised the cameos and stuff will be high, and in in another bit of the article, the same thing was basically saying, although that's part of the MCU formula, will it become a bit stale? Will we expect certain cameos just to be because it's part of the Marvel experience or? But which is why I like Shang Chi because it's so detached apart so from detached, like oh different. Wong's in it as well, but that doesn't really mean anything. But then does that mean because the cameos are high? The first... Does that mean we're going to get like Matt Berry and shit in it? Does it mean we're going to get the shadow I, cast? I, I want Matt Berry. Like I said, if we're not going to get um, Jack Black as Hercules, Hercules. Yeah. Matt Berry, like as big gay space Hercules that drinks and just fucks because okay. that's what the Grecian gods did. All, all Gielmo, they didn't care. Guillermo can be like a little. <laughs> Olympus like maybe you have, student. yeah. Um, oh, what we do in the shadows, which we'll be talking about at some point this weekend. So that's um, that's cool. Um, oh, da, 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 master. Um, yes, Thor, Ragnarok two, Electric Boogaloo. Electric Boogaloo. Um, should we talk about Miss Marvel for a second? Yeah, let's get out. Yeah, let's get out. Done. Actually, no. Quickly, I want to say, um, you know the Midnight Suns game. The Marvel one, yes. Yes, uh, you know that Yuri Lowenthal is returning to voice Spider-Man. Yeah, from the PS4 game, but it's not that one from the PS4 game. It's not that game. one. No. Yet. Exactly, that's why I'm aware. Yet. <laughs> um, wait, so does that mean the Guardians of the Galaxy game is in the same universe as the Avengers game? Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Same company, but no. One game's good, the other's not. One game's good, the other game's Square Enix is the Avengers. Yeah. Uh, I hope not. The boys got renewed for season four. It did. I haven't seen any of season three yet. I'm gonna have to do that. Have you watched all of season one and two? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched. I've watched. Did you not do a before. rewatch? Sometimes you do. I haven't that. yet. No, I haven't yet. No. I might do no, one for Umbrella time. Academy before that new season comes out. Because that's end of this month as well, isn't it? Yeah, lots God of damn. stuff. <laughs> God damn, we're yeah. kind of going to get swamped down with stuff. So it's good because then, like, where I'm not going to have time to see everything. You're not going to have time to watch everything. Like as a mm, series, such, yeah. we can sort of stagger stuff out. So um, it might work out. Yeah. yeah. So we'll probably maybe we'll talk about. One of Jurassic World and Top Gun. Oh, we we'll fucking doing both. What's the, what's the fucking worst that's going to happen? Yeah, there'll yeah. be a movie out. We can talk about Morbius for the rest of our lives. Um, God. But Miss Marvel, Marvel. Can we just say episode one dropped last Wednesday? And let's just. Fantastic. I- Iman Vellani. Fantastic. Is amazing. Because I, d- I had to do this tweet because she's people, a nerd. People were fucking me off, oh, as really? they do online. I don't know about you, but um. Twitter, swap. Don't, don't have big as a pres- I don't have as big as a presence online, but that's my choice, really. I stay away from all that crap. Um, where is it? Tweets and replies. So, um, where was it? 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 Yeah. So there was a Christians Against Miss Marvel group on Facebook. Um, <laughs> God. Miss Marvel might be the biggest slap in the face. The conservative Christians to date, Disney has decided that the face of this franchise should not be Carol Danvers, but instead be a gay Muslim. No straight Christian characters from Marvel. Those days are over. Please join us as we let Disney. We, we will not be cancelled. Um, and someone quote tweeted that with Thanos was right, half of humanity needs to go. Right. Which is understandable mm. because it's fucking stupid. So I decided to tweet, yeah, how dare a character be adapted to screen the way she is in the comics? Honestly, some people don't deserve nice things. Imam Vellani is fantastic and you can feel Kamala Khan jumping right off the page. Which, I hate for, to tell people that um, the character of Ms. Marvel, as, you know, you know, as Kamala Khan, is a bisexual teenage girl from New York. She is from a Muslim background because it's, fucking representation because it was one of the first she was one of the first instances of like a muslim character to be like a mainstream yeah and like not an antagonist like a protagonist within the story she's a 15 year old kid she's spider-man levels of like oh my god this is so cool i'm quite nerdy for the thing which you got in this show exactly episode one and it was great the thing they sold the most yeah and iman valani was born to play kamala khan like, she talks about how she's had arguments with Kevin Feige, like, this isn't 616, and he's like, it is because yeah, I say so. <laughs> and she's also, she also said, and I love this, right, I don't know if you've seen this, mm. she said that um, um, Miss Marvel star Iman Vellani hated how Doctor Strange 2 treated Black Bolt. He's my, yeah, he's yeah. my guy, I think they did him dirty, yeah. I do not appreciate that. <laughs> Jeez. She's a massive fan of, like, she's a nerd about the comics, like we are. Yeah. Like, she's she born to play this role. She's absolutely fucking amazing. And um, I can't wait to see where the rest of the series goes because she was fab. Like, episode one was great. It was great pacing. It set up the whole family dynamic, which was good. Um, it, you know, lends itself to also the bit that worked about the Avengers game, which was her relationship. Her relationship. With, it was just her father in the game, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. But, like, you get sort of that similar thing of, like, he, like, loves her and, like, we'll probably end up knowing what she does, but we'll, like... Let her get away with it, you know, like you're grounded, but like special yeah, special missions. Special yeah, missions. Um, it's fine, I'll let you dress up as the Hulk. <laughs> that was such a cute scene that then it just turned to like it was just a, it was just a scene of a child and her parents, like that's so embarrassing. Like, I, mean, yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, that's that's nice, that's kind of relatable, deep. yeah. Mm. And like, so what if you don't relate to a fucking Muslim like teenage girl? Like, there are more people in the world than cis heterosexual white people. Like, we have had our time and our stories portrayed in film and television medium for millennia, essentially. Why is it so bad? Like, I want to hear other voices and other things. Yeah, like, it's a, it's a we'll culture. Wind in our knowledge. It's a culture that I have very little knowledge about. Like, to have even a relatable um, kind of doorway into it is just something I'm like, yeah, that's that's so cool to me because then it's like I know it's not learning in the traditional sense, but it's like a, this is kind of how you make it in the media, like in, having it in mainstream media, more public attention, like, yeah, yeah, you're, yeah, la- yeah. you know, allowing more people to know that, like, you know, we kind yeah. of have some great stories to tell and some great actors and actresses that we can give to the world as well. Like, it's not just this bottled up bit of culture. Exactly, of course. 
Yeah. And so if you if you're hating Miss Marvel because um of those reasons, um unlucky get um just got, get yeah, no get one out. asked you to watch it. Yeah, exactly. Go back to school. Yeah, go back to Go watch... back to school, you stupid weasel. <laughs> yeah, go 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 cry to your father, you little weasel. But yeah, fuck go off. Go cry to your teacher, you little weasel. But yeah, fuck off. Imavalani's great. Um I really enjoyed episode one. It yeah, was it the solid. very much the origin story stuff. They talked about how they wanted to... Kevin Feige talks about how he wanted to bring the Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse feel of the comics, the yeah. text bubble things off the page, which you got in the trailer, which, which I didn't think was going to come into it. No. But the way the text sort of like appear in the in real the world... In the and on the walls and stuff. It felt like yeah. something from a video game even as well. It was just very it nice. Was, yeah. It was mm. so wholesome and cute and setting up like a story that's like, oh, so kind of... We don't actually really know where it goes because the no, only we thing don't. we got from the trailer is she's a fan of the Avengers and she gets powers. Yeah, that's all Which, we knew. Like I like, but it's also like we don't know where this is going, and that's great. That's great news. But um, yeah, I loved it. The Marvel line is great. I can't wait for everyone to be disappointed when there's cameos that they don't get in it. But <laughs> yeah, for me at the moment, like in terms of shows, two for two for Marvel so far. In terms of like, I thought I was getting for this year is in Moon Knight and Miss Marvel. Yeah. They're the two for yeah. two, yeah. Yeah. I like there was a point where I was like everything that was announced and the stuff of She-Hulk I was like maybe I'm getting fatigued and wanting to start taking breaks from certain things but I won't because of oh, you no. know the compulsion to do this and the fact that you know, my life. I, won't, I want a I, complete story yeah. unless something really sucks then I would consider it but, but, like, I, wouldn't, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's things that you know I'm like because that was like that with DC I was like I don't really want to watch that but like I'll watch I'll watch the Suicide Squad I'll watch Shazam like I'm not bothered about Batman v Superman and all yeah, that kind of shit yeah, no. like I might start Cherry picking like the best bits, yeah. Of course. If it gets to because you're if you're gonna get like fucking overexposed, yeah, because mm. that's the thing. Like, oh, this is unnecessary having like um a joke, like people like Joker 2 is unnecessary, and then quote tweeting it with the like Marvel slate. Like, I get it, like, I don't dislike Marvel for that. There is like a bit much, and it's like we've last year's watched WandaVision, um, Falcon and Winter Soldier, she went to watch all as one, but has sort of dipped in and out of the shows. And the only one she came back for fully was Hawkeye. Because for her it was like it's real world. It links to it. It gave her Daredevil vibes, so it was yeah, of course, a draw yeah. into it. Because there is so much of a plethora, not just in the MCU, because everything's almost canon in the MCU now. So like yeah, yeah, there is so much to draw off of. So there is a lot you can leave and leave at the door. But this is one of the things I was excited for that I think has surpassed my expectations so far. Like Moon Knight, I was like always like that's a batshit character. I never thought we'd get. I'm looking forward to it. Miss Marvel was like a. Oh, that seems like it's the right kind of time, but it was... Uh, yeah, I'm excited for it, I'll watch it, but now I'm oh, like, I cannot I wait really for it Wednesday. Wait. Yeah. It's, it's great, and she hulks one of the things that I'm like, mm. maybe I'll kind of watch that all at once at the end, I don't know. Mm. Maybe just give myself a little break. But, um... Per- perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. We shall see. About just like we shall see that apparently... Um, Amber Heard will be removed from Aquaman 2. Yeah, and then her legal team come back and saying that that's not true at the moment. But, you know, oh, wouldn't be surprised if it another, was. Another trial. Um, fuck that. I've read, yeah, I've read that literally on the way here. That there might be, yeah, another trial it's for like, uh, someone else. for Georgia, But she was like, a, um, complained about the people she like, brought out like they were just like randos. Like, yeah, because Kate Moss is just a random person. Exactly. You fucking idiot. Insignificant. Um, and Ezra Miller has been um, accused uh, of yeah. supplying um, a minor with alcohol, marijuana, and LSD. Again. Individual parents state Ezra uses violence, intimidation, threat, and vo- threat of violence, fear, paranoia, delusions, and drugs to hold away over an ad- to hold sway over uh, adolescent to Carter, which I'm assuming is the young person's name. Yeah, um, must be, must be. Um, but God damn it, Ezra. Dismantle the DCEU, I think. Um, yeah, just make doing? Suicide Squad movies with James Gunn slash Peacemaker shows, Shazam movies. Because we got g- the Black Adam trailer. And that I was just... I have seen it, yeah, but yeah. I just didn't watch it. Not, no reason, I just hadn't genuinely watched it. I've missed Still it, haven't. but then if you watch it, um, mm. it's just got things from every other trailer. So. Oh, okay. Oh, the okay. jet scene from Iron Man 1 happens. Oh, right. And, yeah. the, and the rock just, like, the flying looks shit. Does it? Mm. Mm. Doctor Fate looks great because yeah, I, l- so I love the fact that we're trailer, getting yeah. a antagonist, basically a Avengers movie, but from Loki's point the of view, villain's point of view, yeah. essentially. Mm. Um, I can't wait because Zachary Levi has been talking about how, like, like, obviously can't wait for it, and how we like, you know, face off soon, kind yeah, of thing, I like know, alluding yeah. to because we know that eventually Black Adam and Shazam will fight each other because it's just evil soon. Shazam. But yeah, 
things like just to make the good stuff get rid of if you're gonna I don't know I feel like the DCU is just it's circling the fucking drain at this point but um we shall see shall I end with a thing I've got two more things and then we can sort of you know, I don't know gossip about Kenobi a bit more because we can't kind of yeah. glossed over it <laughs> um so mm. two people that have roles in right. HBO's The Last of Us. Uh-huh. Do you know who they are? Uh-huh. What um uh, Pedro Pascal and the girl from Game of Thrones comic their name? Bella Ramsey? Ella Ramsey? Bella Ramsey, yeah. Bella Ramsey, yeah. So um two people that have parts are Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson. Oh, they're they're in it, aren't they? They both have roles yes. in The Last of Us T V show. They're actually in it. Hmm. Yay! I and mean, so Pedro Pascal as so Joy Baker could be Pe- Joel's brother who dies at the beginning, risen <laughs> out of the blue, or cousins maybe. Maybe I don't know. And then the and then the, the woman I, I like that because it sort of is the you know this came from the game, so this is how you know. A girl can be the girl that you follow in the game, um, the one that Joel, Joel likes in the game. Oh, her, yeah. Um, I've forgotten. It. I've been so long since. I last of she, us. Yeah, I haven't touched Last of Us in ages, but. Yeah, the woman that is kind of the central character in the plot between Ellie and Joel. There's that woman who... A woman. A woman. She could be a, a woman, Matt Smith. What happened to time? What happened to time? A woman. Um, I'm kind of Maybe. gutted that Matt Smith wasn't the announcement because everyone was like, it's Matt Smith, it's Matt Smith. And it was like, oh, it's not Matt Smith yet. Because there was... Uh, so I saw... There's a lot of, you know, the fake showbiz article things on um, Twitter. Mm. And one of them that was um, breaking news, Matt Smith cast as the voice of Beep the Meep. Um, in an interview regarding this casting, he said, "You know, I played the Eleventh Doctor, right?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that's why I got beat for me, because you know I was the Eleventh Doctor, right? <laughs> well, but, yeah, um, of course. <laughs> so, this person tweeted yesterday. Um, so, take this with a huge pinch of salt because this is from the DMs of Twitter that someone the posted the screenshots. Right. Like my reliable, basically said like my reliable sources said this, but they blacked out their name and stuff. Um, so, um, and there was comments on it that were like, you know, is this reliable? Is this real? Some of this stuff has maybe been heard before on Reddit things and rumours. So it might just be taken from bullshit. It might be real. But um, they said, <clears throat> regards to Doctor Who, be ready for several announcements in the near future, not just tonight's. All I'll say is Talale isn't the only one returning from Moffat's era. Mm-hmm. Here's an interesting thing. Oh, here's, sorry. Here's an interesting thing I'm hearing. Chibnall does not want to do SDCC, which would be San Diego Comic-Con. August. SDCC. Is it July or August? I think August. And then we'll have to go to one one day. Um, so obviously because October is the hundredth anniversary of the BBC, yeah. but they've been rumoured that November, around the anniversary time, will be a when the Doctor Who yeah. special airs. Makes sense. Um, he flat out said no. The BBC want him to do it, but um, he has refused to go. Um, mm. So apparently Russell has been offered the slot so that he can promote the 60th and his return era. Mm. Um, and he, apparently he's very keen on doing it. So next month could be, we could end up getting a lot more info on the 60th. People like Jody, Mandip and John want to like go out there and you know promote their last hurrah. But yeah. the rumour is that Chibnall's kind of just like, I kind of want to just get it out there, get it over with kind of thing. Yeah. Which is a shame, but mm. doesn't. Which seems like it could be real, but also he was such an advocate for SDCC the last few years, so that might just be bullshit, and mouth. he just hasn't yeah. had time. Yeah, word of mouth. But um, mm. if that's true, like you would want like your last thing of like this is my last one of showrunner, the last one of joke. You would want to get everyone, all your stars, on arguably yeah, pop exactly. culture's biggest stage. Yeah, exactly. Of course, which is SDCC. But if they offer it to Russell, I wouldn't be surprised if because Russell's good at he. This person's in it and this person's in it, but you've got no idea what's going on. And there's some surprises that will be kept back. Back, of course. Backstage, back doors. Yeah. So, I wouldn't be surprised if someone like John Sim ended up being in it. They wouldn't be announced because the master was hidden until right at the very end of Series 3. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if we got some more things of like, oh, go on then, Matt Smith is in it. Like, he comes out last or <laughs> yeah, something. Or like, a, another returning doctor kind of thing. Yeah. Um, maybe mm. we'll get confirmation if the special death film at the moment is the Christmas one. Because yeah. of the Christmas lights have been up, but why would you film a 2023 Christmas special this yeah. early? Unless yeah. they're filming this one, then filming the anniversary one, and filming the other one before it. I don't know, because we still don't know when Series 14 is 
set to come out. Yeah, mm. we would heard 2023, but it's still could be right at the end, could be right at the beginning. But we're, the, the belief is that specials first, shoot is series after Last. that. Yeah, yeah. So yes. maybe we'll get more info on that. We'll, maybe like we'll get sort of like an in-depth info on if it turns out to be the Christmas one they're filming now. We we'll like more of an in-depth look on that. Maybe a trailer. Maybe information on the other two specials. And then maybe just have Shooty out there answering some questions from some fans. Like Russell was like always been a great advocate for the show, like we say, promoted and stuff like that. But like he's and people are like, why is he you know, like promoting his show? But a lot of people have said like, well, this current production team haven't really bothered to market their version, so why should he not utilize you know social media in general and the attention of the fans? Because everyone's hanging off his every word because he made Doctor Who what it is and he's giving it global appeal again. Exactly. He's made it cool again, arguably. I would, I, yeah, I would love if like Chibnall was there to actually just be like, look, because yeah. it's not had the best marketing strategy no. this era. No, it hasn't. It definitely but to hasn't. just go out one more time and be like, here's a trailer for the Centenary Special. Here's the title. Yeah. How I Met Your here, Mother. Here's um, here's Jody, um, Sasha Dewan we knows in it. So have him come out. Have Mandip. Have John. Like have them have them for and special guest Brad by Bradley Walsh. <laughs> yeah, like you could have Bradley, like, or maybe it. or maybe like a message from Bradley because we know that yeah. he's in it. Maybe just for the oh, by dot com. Just oh, you know, I was dog. filming the chase yeah. over at ITV. <laughs> oh, I um, you're going. What do you mean you're going? And maybe you have Sophie Aldred and um, uh, yeah, Janet Field in there as well. Yeah, maybe you have them just like answering some questions, talking about what it's like for them to return and the return what, of canine. You know, what they're looking forward to with like the like the end of this era, like how they've felt about the show in general. Looking forward to Russell's, and then maybe you have, like, you know, her doing sort of like a pass over to Shooty and Russell and stuff like that, and be like, and then like you do your bit. So it's almost like a double bill panel kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because you should get like. It's one episode left. Let's just go full lever Some and close just shot for you know, this run. Yeah. Let's all, as a collective fandom, not shit on it. Let's just come together. Let's try and enjoy it for one last time. Let's go out on a high. Let's give Jody a send off. A send off, yeah. But you also like BBC for fuck's sake, promote it. Sort yourselves out, yeah. Because we get bit of news, bit of news, bit of news. Radio Quiet. silence. Quiet, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like yeah. fuck was happening, fuck was happening, nothing. Or then you had either the dialects, and it was like nothing. And then here's the thing about Sea Devils. And then nothing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then here's a little bit about the centenary special. And then nothing. <laughs> so, my hopes for Doctor Who remain high for the era to come. Yeah. But I just want this to end well. Exactly. More than anything. Yeah. This special. To like end if well. this come, this come out, tied up a few of the loose ends. Like obviously it won't tie up everything because I don't think it can. <laughs> In an hour and a half, I don't no. think it can fix all of the problems. No, you probably won't. If it come out on a, as a majority, it was like a solid seven, eight out of ten. Um, collectively, if like me and you came on the week after it was on, it just sort of went. You know what? That was really good. I wasn't Ooh. expecting it to be that. Like my expectations were low, but all in all, Jody Zero wasn't as terrible, and there wasn't. Exactly. A, there wasn't, it wasn't like there was no payoff. No, exactly. And it was nice return Zero characters to that were given stuff to do. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Ideally, that's what we want to say. Yeah. But if we come out and say, "Oh my god, that was the best episode. I wish we had this the whole time," then that would just have been like, "Oh, it's a shame." But, sl- but for me, mm. Caves of Androzani is that for me with the Fifth Doctor. If every doc- if every Fifth Doctor story was as well written and directed, like and Caves of Caves of Androzani, then he would have stayed a lot longer. But he, is, he even said like he wished all of his scripts were like Androzani. Yeah. So I want it to end on a high, but I don't want it to just sort of be like a thing of like everyone like, oh, like that was shit, or oh, it, like why wasn't it like this the whole time? Yeah, that kind of argument. Like he's had a plan that's been restricted by the lack of faith in it after the Capaldi era. No disrespect to him, but like episode cuts, mm. and COVID as well. You've had bigger gaps in production time, so it's not been consistently in the public eye. So it's been an uphill battle that some of that he's contributed to himself. Yeah, of course, of course. But all in all, I think Chris Chibnall is a quality writer, but I just don't think sci-fi is where his heart his is. Heart lies, yeah. Like he's really good at dramas that have the entrappings and stuff like that. So it's almost like he wrote Doctor Who like he would a write drama. a Broadchurch, but it's just got the entrappings of a sci-fi within it. And yeah. some of it he's done really well. Like he's written, like people will argue about it, but I, I think the big. Well, technically the big four, because if you count Santarans as like a fourth place kind of thing, like. The big four villains he's written very well. Yeah, no, the villains are probably like more so for Sontarans than more of the Sontarans, but um, yeah. 
you know, the master amazing like done really well and a great cast in the Sasha Duan. The Daleks made um more terrifying again and giving them more horror aspects back and yeah, proving yeah, that yeah, yeah. the mutant is the scary thing. But when one of those gets in its armour, then you're fucked kind you're of thing. Fucked, yeah. And the Cybermen, like Ashard and the Lone Cybermen, I hope that doesn't all get shit on by him returning, but like that was a really good Powerful. interpretation of the Cybermen. Yeah. Powerful horror, sort of very Mary, Mary Shelley esque with the way he was introduced and Mary yes. Frankenstein inspired. It was, it was amazing. I, I really did enjoy it. Mm. Um, you know, we've spoken about this era in length. We kind of let Will ramble on about it like yeah, not that long yeah. ago. So um, hopefully, we'll get a plethora of guests for the Doctor Who centenary special. But um, there's some people I, w- I do want to hopefully get involved with it, not just our returning friends, but maybe if we could, maybe Dom, maybe Guy, maybe Billy, maybe some other people, we can sort of rope into something, but uh, we shall see. Because in the meantime, that has been it for this episode on the World Podcast. Um, a bit of a sort of amalgamation catch-up one, but we're going to have an in-depth film review or two next or week. Or two next week, yeah. Um, it, the, let's just say the vast of it will be taken up by Jurassic World Dominion because I think even if Top Gun is underwhelming for me, I think we're both going to kind of agree that it's really high-quality stuff. Because have you seen that? Um, so they took the screen grabs of Multiverse of Madness and said that, you know, that doesn't seem fair. And they photoshopped Benedict Cumberbatch onto Wanda's body. And it was like, I really... My, I finally get a titular sequel after six years, and everyone thinks it's underwhelming. You make a leg, and then um, Tom Cruise is on Doctor Strange as well. It's like, and you make a legacy sequel after thirty-five years, and it becomes highest grossing film of the year. Yeah, that doesn't, doesn't seem fair. fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I look forward, yeah, so I think we'll, our, it will be short and sweet, but nothing to disservice Top Gun. But I think it's both, both of us just going to be going like, yeah, that was really good and really fun, and the set pieces were great, and it was a like surprisingly fun movie. And I think a lot of our talk will be Jurassic World Dominion, so get your questions in for that next week. Dog you can minion. send them to... Uh, nerdbiblecontact at gmail.com via electronic mail. And you can also get in contact with us through Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And we are on TikTok. Oh. Yes, I just, oh you know, boy. so I could save the TikTok. username. So we've got TikTok. We'll maybe, I think, start posting some behind-the-scenes stuff on there, maybe. Get some things on get there. Some TikToks. Leave us your thoughts on what we should do for our first TikTok. Yes. First couple. Who should we kill first? Who should we kill? Who should we generate into? Electronic meal. But um, yes. In the meantime, you can catch us soon. I don't know when it'll be released, but we'll have the what we do in the shadows episode that we will be um, recording. I think it's at some point this weekend, so we'll be doing that. Okay. Um. So I got to buy that and watch it. So that's great news. The movie, yeah. Okay. Yes. But we're gonna. Yeah, I said to him like, movie. we are gonna talk about the TV show, right? It's like, yeah, it's all the same thing. It's all canon. Yeah, so we'll talk about the movie will be the review and then we'll be like and I love how this has been elaborated on because the show has the same feel and it's it's just just it's 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 amazing. It's amazing. Oh, it's brilliant. Um but yes, look for that on the Silver Screen podcast channel. As always, it's been a pleasure to be alongside Connor. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yes, and I am also and I'm also here. Um I'm also here. And um, just want to say again, Connor, well done for your good news, and yes. it means more stuff for us. Hopefully, we might free up some time for ourselves. Fingers crossed. Yes. Yeah. Hopefully, some of it can go towards you as well in your ways. In like a sexy way, he means. Of course. He's stripping off in as all, he tells me. In all sorts of He's ways. He's ripping his shirt off as he looks me in the eye. <laughs> Talk dirty to me. <laughs> He's actually dressed as Ravenger Thor. Like it's been completely coincidental, <laughs> but he's wearing a sleeveless Lego jacket. <laughs> But he's singing an electronic version of the Toast of London theme. Quick, play the outro. Sweet Toast of Life.